we conclude chapter three with the last section on differential equations, in particular the Laplace boundary value problem. Remember the very first lecture of this course where I was telling about my little view of this world and people turning real world problems like weather forecast into mathematical equations. And I said that often these equations are differential equations or integral equations. And in examples and exercise problems, we saw that the operators connected with differential equations, which are differential operators, are typically unbounded. Whereas in integral equations, we often have bounded, sometimes even compact operators, so-called integral operators. And then if you look further through our course, through chapters two and three, you will realize that pretty much everything we're doing is for bounded linear operators, right? We have this notation for Lxy, and that essentially is our universe. Everything we do is inside that universe, and that it means bounded linear operators. Um, and leaving it like that would, of course, mean that um, differential equations are essentially out of the scope of this course. So we cannot deal with differential equations in this course, which to be honest would make this course pretty useless because most of the equations that you will encounter coming from real world problems are differential equations. Um, so it's very important to say something about that. And what I'm gonna say is the following. Um, for many differential equations, there's a technique to turn them into integral equations. And by doing so, you bring them into our universe of bounded linear operators that we can deal with and thereby uh, you're able to use the tools of this course. Um, okay, so this technique of reducing a differential equation into an integral equation or transforming it um, depends very much on the equation. There are techniques that take ODEs, ordinary differential equations, which are differential equations in just one variable. It's clear after which variable you, you differentiate. Um, and you can turn them in integral equations, essentially in one dimension. But also for many important classes of partial differential equations, PDEs, such reduction methods exist. And let me illustrate this technique for one very important example. And that's the so-called Laplace boundary value problem. And to get this a bit more exciting, let's try to do this in 3D. Although my attempts to draw something will naturally stick to 2D, I'm afraid. Okay, so let's start with a bounded and open set, let me call it omega, in R3. We all remember what bounded means. It means you can fit it in, inside a ball. Uh, and maybe you recall that open means uh, around every point of omega, you can wiggle a little bit, find a little neighborhood that is still entirely in omega. Or you could phrase it differently. You could also say that a set is open if and only if it's complement. So all the rest of R3 that is not in omega forms a closed set. Okay. And now with this set omega in mind, we want to solve the following problem. You first have a differential equation, Laplacian of u equals zero in omega, where the Laplacian is a particular differential operator that takes second derivative of u in all directions. So these are partial derivatives. So you differentiate u two times after the first variable, two times after the second variable, and two times after the third variable, this is in R3. And then you add up these second derivatives and this sum is called the Laplacian of u and that should be zero. I tell you applications in a second. 
and in addition on the boundary of omega which is usually denoted by d omega with this little d that you also use for partial derivatives you prescribe the values of your function u by some other function g where this function g shall be a continuous function on this boundary which looks like a curve which looks like a line in my drawing here but actually in r3 it's a it's a surface right it's like a 2d surface of a ball or something that almost looks like a ball okay and solving this problem or this system means you have to find the solution u and u should be two times continuously differentiable inside omega because you want to compute these second derivatives here and it should also be continuous on the closure of omega which is omega together with its boundary d omega okay because only then it makes sense to talk about the value or the limit of the function u at the boundary d omega and expect it to be equal to that other function g okay this here is called the laplace equation for obvious reasons because you call this the laplace operator and if it comes with this boundary condition then you call it laplace boundary value problem so who poses such problems well um you could for example be a temperature distribution in 3d space or it could be a chemical concentration of some substance inside space and this laplace equation here laplace u equals zero describes a situation where nothing's changing anymore so the temperature distribution is stable everything is in some sort of equilibrium or the chemical concentration is in a steady state so it's not moving anymore which typically happens after the fusion so when the fusion comes to an end if it uh, converges to something then that something is typically uh, equilibrium uh, a situation that can be described by this it doesn't mean u has to be a constant function of course constant functions are subject to that condition but they are not the only ones a function that's subject to this condition is typically called a harmonic function and there are many of them okay and this boundary condition here prescribes the value of your uh, quantity u along the boundary so for example if you think about temperatures then you know the temperature around your domain or uh, room or whatever it could be omega is given by some function g because you want to have it like that or you you observe it as like that um, similarly with chemical concentrations and the question that remains is how is the function u able to fill all the inside of your set omega with values that on the one hand give you these limits on the boundary and on the other hand give you a harmonic function that seems pretty happy uh, with the with physics and now of course there's a large community of people uh, attacking such a problem by uh, discretization of your r3 domain here so you cut this into little cubes or pyramids or something and then you replace um, derivatives by differences and work with finite differences and give you large systems of linear equations why are these systems so large well because if you're cutting a 3d object into tiny little cubes or pyramids you get a whole lot of points and every one of these points corresponds to a row and a column of your system of your matrix in the end others would use finite element methods what do they do well they also start by cutting your omega into little pieces uh, 
and then on every little piece they compute something like integral over your Laplacian u uh, multiplied by so-called test function so you could understand this as some sort of scalar product and then you use things like um, partial integration or you could call it uh, Green's formulas to get one of these second derivatives onto the other side so you're down to first derivatives which sounds like an improvement um, okay and then in the end you get again a large system because you have incredibly many points by the way if you look closely the finite element method turns out to be a particular kind of uh, Galyorkin method and by what we know now it's in the end it's all a, a finite section method because every Galyorkin method is a finite section method uh, okay, but don't tell these FEM people. They might get angry with you. So what we do here is we propose this other approach that takes our partial differential equation together with its boundary condition and turns everything into one integral equation. The so-called boundary integral equation, we will see that. Okay, and then attack this integral equation by means of the tools of our course. Of course, this is not a new technique, so this is not something that we invented. People know this and people are using this, so it's not exotic or something. 